Do you own a DeWalt scroll saw and think there might be something wrong with it? Or perhaps it's time to get it serviced? Hold on, before we go any further, this service will extend the life of your saw. It will ensure 10 years of problem-free use out of your saw. 10 years, no joke. Well, the bearings in this machine do not last as long as you might think. I'll show you step-by-step -step how to take it apart, fix common problems, lubricate the bearings, and put it all back together. Yes, you can do it, it's not that hard, and I'll show you how right now. Here's what you'll need. Thread locker, use the blue removable kind, non-petroleum based jelly for three rubber items, and synthetic grease. This grease is the secret to making your bearings last for 10 years. Do not use WD-40, you'll ruin your saw inside of two days. Do not use oil, oil will spin off. You must use this grease, it's perfect. It will run to the heat, it won't spin off. A drill is also helpful and these tools. Either go back and pause this screen or you can find details step-by-step -step in these complete lists on Instructables. Remove the table by turning the trunnion knob, get it all the way off. Do not let the washer hit the floor. If it does, it will vanish. Pull it straight off and put it aside. Now we'll take the blade clamps off I cleaned mine off because I like things nice and clean. Now this plunger should spin. Pull it straight out and then you can lubricate it with the non-petroleum jelly. As this plunger hits your blade, you want it to stop spinning and you want the knob to spin around the plunger. That way your blade won't get all twisted. That's the last rubber item. It will need lubed too. Then take the blade guard off. You'll need the Torx 25. Now you can remove the bottom yellow plate. You'll get a 10 millimeter ratchet, capture those nuts on the other side, and a Torx 27 removes the rest of these screws. And you need the 27, which is a very rare size. Sometimes when you get those big kits, they don't have the 27 for some reason. Put that aside. And to make things more stable, reinsert this one. Now the rest are captured, so you don't need the ratchet. That one's larger than the others, just kind of remember that. I found a flathead screwdriver, gentle pressure here, and a little twist. And you want to pull this straight off, but don't let the top arm fall out, because it might. Now this part might come out, it's a metal plate. If it falls, that's fine. If you have black dust or metal powder in this area, that could be a problem with your bearings. Mine was fine. The wavy washer was missing on my saw. I could tell someone's been in it. Sometimes it's captured here, it did not fall off. It just didn't have it. This helps stiffen everything up so you can do the remaining operations. Remove the nuts and bolts in these two areas to free the rocker arm. You'll need a very small 7 millimeter wrench and a Torx 25. Oh, I almost lost it. I was so close to losing it. My saw would have been useless without this. Get both of those out. Spin the motor shaft so the counterweight's in the 10 o'clock position. Make sure that's seated on the frame. That'll make it go easier. This is left-hand thread. You must go clockwise to loosen it. Do not do the opposite. You'll ruin that motor. It's a $260 motor. Be sure to keep this very rare left-hand threaded nut safe. You do not want to lose it. The top arm needs to slightly come away to free the rocker assembly. Just be gentle and go slow. And then reseat it when you're done and clamp it so it doesn't go anywhere. Now I'll turn my attention to the front lower rocker assembly so I can get at all of those bearings and start lubricating them. The process is the same for all of these bearings. I won't show them all on camera. Just take things apart, clean them, store the parts, and then expose this metal sleeve. This is hardened steel. It should be smooth. There should be no vertical dents. 
If there are, you'll have to replace the bearing and the sleeve. Mine were all okay. Those are the bearings. You need to clean them and then lubricate them. I use various methods, pipe cleaner, Q-tip, and a Q-tip with a cloth wrapped around it, nice and clean. Then you want to use the synthetic grease, really get it in there. I didn't show that on camera. You want to really scrub it into those bearings and then put them back. That's it. That's the secret. That's how your tool lasts for over 10 years. Here's a closer look at the rocker assembly and the torque sizes for the screws and the bolt sizes for the ratchets. This bearing is completely sealed. You will not be able to service it. If there's something wrong with this bearing, you will need to replace it. This section of the saw gets the most punishment and there's two bearings in there. You really want to make sure you get this the most clean and the most lubricated. And when you reassemble, this screw needs the thread locker. This is where a lot of problems occur in the saw, a lot of noise. So you really want to make sure this bolt does not go anywhere. To remove the front top rocker assembly, you have to first get rid of this plastic electronics housing. It can just fall to the side. Then this tension knob is removed with an Allen key. And inside that threaded screw is another wavy washer. This can easily get lost. And both this wavy washer and the other one are critical to the machine functioning properly. Remove the tension knob and the sleeve. Take off these two screws and then the front top rocker assembly will come free. And inside of it is this rubber bladder that moves the air in that hose, which I think is cool. Now the base, this is an optional fix. There's a minor design flaw. This screw is not captured in there. Sometimes when you're putting the trunnion tension knob back on, that'll pop out and then it doesn't sit properly and you can have issues getting your table nice and stiff. Just a minor little fix. Now here's where noise can happen in your machine. Notice how that tops out. Well, remove these four screws. That's Torx 20, by the way. And then grind down at an angle that lower part. This will not hurt your tool. It will not damage it in any way. It just gives it more clearance to be more quiet. It will only smack this top roof if it's going really fast. But just that little bit will make your machine much quieter. Now look, it has to really strain to get that high. At this point, just reverse the steps to put everything back together. Oh yeah, I painted my saw red for some reason. <laughs> if you want to know more about that, Click the info card. Now, here's this wedge. I haven't talked about it. That's what tensions the blade. That wedge pulls on that metal plate. So I put grease on there because metal on metal. I'm just putting the front assemblies back on. There's really no difficult process here. Just do what you did in reverse. The trick with this is just to take your time don't force anything and don't let that top arm fall out. That's the most critical part. You don't want to bend those rocker assemblies. Add some thread locker to the motor shaft and remember left hand thread. And now I get to add the wavy washer that did not come with my used scroll saw. I bought that new and that will keep the noise down. And here we go. Look at this. It's working. She's purring like a kitten. <laughs> 